Before we dive into Recycle, let's take a look at how we traditionally use loops in a digital audio workstation. We'll be using Cubase for this example, and I'll briefly show you how to import, edit the file, set it to the grid, and use the time stretch tool to get it in time with your metronome. So let's get started. In Cubase, you want to select the track that you want to import to. You can go to the File menu, Import, Audio File. We'll grab something from my desktop. Open track 17 here. And as you probably already know, most sample CDs on their track listing will include four or five samples on one track. Let's hear what we have here. All right, track num uh, loop number two sounds interesting, so let's cut this up and align it to the grid and get it in time with our tempo, which is 125. Use a scissor tool. We'll turn the grid off to be able to zoom in where we need to. And it's very important that you cut this file exactly at the beginning in order to be able to get it in time. We'll cut here and delete the piece before it. In Cubase, you use G to zoom out and H to zoom in. And if I look closely, I can see that the actual file ends at this point. I'll delete the piece after it. So that's the first step. You want to cut that exactly at the beginning and exactly at the end. Um, I know that I have exactly four bars here, so when I stretch this in time with the grid, it should be in time with our tempo. I'm going to turn the grid on and bring the file back to the beginning of five. And even just visually looking at this, I can see that at 125, four bars would begin at five and end at measure nine. But as I look at the tempo of the loop, it and short of measure nine, which is an indication that the loop is too fast. So there's a feature where I can turn the cursor into a time stretch tool. And as long as the grid is on, I can grab the white handle and snap that to the grid. Now this loop should be in tempo here at 125. Let me turn the click track on and we can take a listen to this. There we go. So traditionally, you want to be able to manipulate the pattern of the loop. And in a digital audio workstation, this would involve cutting the file into pieces and moving these individual elements around. Let's do a little bit of this to see what the difference would be. snare back here. So as you can see, that can be very time consuming uh, if you want to reprogram a typical loop. And this is one of the benefits of Recycle when we get later into the instructional uh, tutorial series here. You can see that we'll be able to do this very quickly and efficiently once we've recycled the loop. Uh, let me go a little bit further and import another loop. Let me just reset this one and show you how we can layer two loops together. Okay, I'm going to use the second loop in this file. I'll repeat the process. So there's the beginning. Delete the loop before that and cut it right at the very end. It 
bits would be there. Now I've turned the grid on and I'm going to move this right to the beginning of measure 5. And once again visually I can see that this loop is actually slower than my tempo of 125 because it's longer even though it is 4 bars in itself. I'll grab the time stretch tool, make sure the grid is turned on, grab it by the wide handle, and make sure that this 4 bars ends at measure 9. And let's hear these two loops together. Okay, just for fun, I'm going to, um, let me solo this loop. And hear this one by itself. Yeah, let me take some of the low end out of here. If I hit the E button, it'll open up the channel strip. Here's my EQ section. Just sort of emphasize the high end content in that loop. Now here's another technique that you can use to uh, turn these loops into uh, a hybrid of the two. If you use the scissor tool, I've got the grid set at eighth notes. I can cut at the first eighth note resolution and I'm holding option down while I do this. It actually cuts the whole loop up into eighth note slices. I'll do the same here. And now with the mute tool, I can begin to crisscross these patterns. You typically do not want to, you would not want to mute both of these files here because there will be no audio playing there. So you could try a bit of a random checker, checkered pattern here and see what you come up with. And that's pretty interesting. That way you can take a hybrid of two loops and turn them into something completely new. Now let's take a look at Recycle and see how we can accomplish these same type of editing features uh, with a loop that's been recycled.